Welcome back to another week of Hello Ladies, where feminism meets pro wrestling. I am one of your hosts, Sabrina Hannon. I am Maggie Manley. And today we are continuing our series on Women Wrestling Forgot. And we are talking about someone that WWE literally tried to like wipe out of their records. Ren- wow, Wendy Richter. Um, she was someone that when we were looking at other, um, wrestlers kept coming up and it was a name that like, oh, I've heard this name before, but I don't think I know like anything she's done. Why don't we like look her up? And then there was just so much and I got so angry. (laughs) Yeah. uh, The first thing I did when you said her. I looked at Brian, I go, who the fuck was Wendy Richter? And he goes, oh, the original screw job. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't recall any of this. So, you know, we live in the age of the internet and he immediately went on YouTube and pulled it up and holy shit. <laughs> yeah, she, um, and it's crazy because she was part of like a big part of a couple different major events that we've talked about before, like Cindy Lauper, when we were talking about how Cindy Lauper should be in the hall of fame, that's Wendy Richter. She's right there with like, yep. Nope. WWE did a Vince McMahon did a really good job of like erasing her from the history. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, it's almost like she's been Ben Wad, but didn't do anything to deserve it like Ben Wad did. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, Wendy Richter's full name is Victoria Wendy Richter, and she was born September eighth, uh, nineteen sixty. She is actually a um, she's still alive. She is, I think, is she the first person we've covered that's still alive? Oh wait, no, Ivory the. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, Ivory. <laughs> Ivory is still very much with us, so with us, thank God. Um, but Wendy Richter, uh, prior to getting into wrestling, um, she worked for her family's ranch in Texas, uh, and she took part in rodeo competitions. She was an athlete in high school, and once she graduated high school, she majored in computer programming in a call in the Dallas College. Um, and I couldn't really find anything that explained how she went from computer programming and the rodeo to wrestling, but she did. Maybe the rodeo. I mean, that's kind of like a carniac too, you know, like. Yeah, it's, it's quite possible. Um, she, again, because there's not. And because she's had like a normal quote unquote life after wrestling, she doesn't give that many interviews. Um, but she was she was trained at Mula's school, um, but not by Mula herself. She was trained by uh Liani Kai, Judy Martin, and Joyce Grable, I think is how you say her name. Um, and she went over to Japan um got to work there she said that from being in japan they they work a lot stiffer of the women there at least at that time than in the u.s and she didn't she didn't mind it in fact she took a lot from it and that's how um she said she was able to integrate it when she came back to the states into her own style um to make what she was doing look more realistic Uh, i'm pretty sure in japan it's still that way i mean if you watch any recent women's match it, it's still pretty hard hitting compared to over here like just the triple threat match that was just on um with mercedes like her championship mm-hmm. match holy shit like they slap the hell out of each other they yeah they definitely work a lot stiffer over there men and women it's just strong, strong style. style yeah um Wendy even though she went through Mula's school has I uh, from everything I saw always been vocal about not liking Mula 
Um, she's she's said things about how Mula is the most vile person she's ever met long before like the allegations and like everything came out about the human trafficking with Mula. Um, you know, she did everything she could to like derail her students. Um, she, Wendy was said that anytime she was working, Mula would take a cut of that money. And like the bookers initially were just paying Mula the money. And then Mula was giving her some of that. That's, that's part of human trafficking. Um, so she wasn't even sure what she was getting fully. And at some point she was like, absolutely not. I'm done with this. Uh, when Wendy won the, I think it was like rookie of the year is what it was called. Um, trophy. Uh, Mula said she lost it. And Wendy said like, she could just see Mula like leaving it somewhere and like laughing maniacally to herself. So she no longer has her trophy. She may never have actually received the trophy. Um, Full human being. like, Yeah. And it has to suck because like she wound up having to work with uh, Mula quite a bit throughout her career, which we'll get into. But uh, Wendy did win the prior to entering WWE. She won the NWA's Women's World Tag Team Championships with Joyce Grable, one of her trainers and also the person she went to Japan with. Um, they won those championships twice. Then when she came to WWF, um, she won the Women's World Championship twice. Now, she made her wrestling debut in, I think it was 1979. Yeah, 1979. So um, she she did a lot in wrestling for not being in it very long. I think she was in wrestling for about well, I can't, maybe I shouldn't say not for very long, but about mm, 10 years, thereabouts, she was, she was in wrestling. Um, yeah, 79 to like 87-ish, right? And then, yeah. Or like, yeah. Um, but what, so some of the things that we would know her from um, and things that people are familiar with, just not necessarily the person involved with it. Um, one of those title wins was when uh, Wendy Richter ended Mula's legendary and historic reign for the women's championship. Um, and that match got MTV their highest TV ratings up until that point, because that's where it was broadcast on, which is pretty impressive. Um, yeah, MTV used to be very involved with wrestling like back in the well i mean the whole rock and wrestling thing which again um, was wendy richter yeah um, her and cindy lopper who are still friends today um were the the like that connection so uh cindy lopper for that it was at wrestlemania right that that match yeah she pulled um she wanted Wendy Richter to represent her in that match against Mula. And that match was a lot of things. Like that probably was one of the things that got the wheels turning towards the screw job, which sounds weird because Wendy brought a lot of eyes to WWF's product. Um, not only was she um you know friends with cindy lopper and doing the rock and wrestling connect no what what is it called it's rock, rock and wrestling okay so that is what it is called you would think it would have had a slightly catchier name the rock and wrestling connection um she was on magazine cover she was in cartoon she was in cindy lopper's music video like she was a cross uh, promotional superstar um one of the first like she was even on hulk hogan's yeah cartoon. that's cartoon in the morning yeah um and women weren't doing those things at that point like she was going everywhere really getting over um and she could also wrestle which is you know amazing <laughs> yeah. for the time um but that match at WrestleMania is what really got um, Wendy thinking because 
the reason the screw job happened, she started campaigning for women to be paid fairly. Uh, women at the time were making what jobbers were making, sometimes less, um, which, and these were ones who were signed. The f- few exceptions were Wendy, which she still wasn't making what the, anywhere where the men were making, um, and Mula. Mula was making cash money, of course. But uh, for the WrestleMania match, to give you an idea, Roddy Piper made 75K. Uh, Paul Orndorff made 20K. Wendy made 5K. When you think about that WrestleMania or just WrestleMania moments in general, you think about that Cindy Lauper match. Um, we would probably think about it with Wendy Richter involved had they not like cut her out of everything after this happened. But yeah, 5K, that's 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 what she made. It's really surprising to me that they actually inducted her into the Hall of Fame, considering that you never hear about her ever. Like if they talk about like women's revolution or like any like anything to do with women's wrestling, pretty much since I've been watching again, you never hear her mentioned ever. Mm-hmm. And then like reading about her, it's like, holy shit, like she was a big part of the 80s. Why is she never mentioned? Like, Yeah. And she, I, th- I feel like one of the reasons she was inducted, she has a spotless record. Like she doesn't have um, a problem with drugs. She never had any. The only thing that like tainted her record was what WWF did to her. Like, that's it. It's completely spotless otherwise. Like she she would have been like an excellent ambassador, um, like just like a little wholesome little cherub of a person, it seems. Even now, like since she's left wrestling, she went back to school. Um, she got what let me see, what was it? So she first went into real estate so she could pay her way through school. She earned a degree in physical therapy and a master's in occupational therapy, which she still works as an occupational therapist. And she competes in dog shows like the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. Which is awesome. Yeah. So now, like, so my family puts that on every Thanksgiving. So now I'm going to look and see if I can see Wendy Richter running around with a dog. And like, where's Waldo? Mm-hmm. <laughs> where's the blonde lady who used to wrestle? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I feel like that's one of the reasons they inducted her was there was probably like some sort of scandal going around at the time. And they were just like, she's the safest bet. Like, and I also think maybe having, because what, it was 2010, right? Mm-hmm. That she was inducted. So I was wondering, like, what 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 happened in 2010? I don't. That is like far beyond anything I was watching at that point. Like that, that wasn't even a thought in my head. Wrestling at that point. Yeah. Um. And I mean, 2010. It could have also been. I mean, it could have been Stephanie McMahon behind the scenes because she would have been a little girl at that time. Probably really liked Wendy Richter. Um. You know, it could have been her being like, she really deserves this. Yeah, It'll maybe. Look good. Possibility. I mean, that would probably be, that'd be around the time that stuff was like really not camera and more behind the scenes, wouldn't it? I think so. I think it was when she was having her kids. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the, the original screw job happened in 1985. Um. And yeah, so basically what it was, um, the, she was the face of the division, um, was not getting paid what she should have been getting paid, found out what the guys were making. And she was like, this is ridiculous. And she wanted to renegotiate her contract. And she was advocating that the other women get paid what they should be getting paid. And Vince decided to make an example out of her. She still had time left on her contract. This wasn't a Bret Hart thing. Um, like, and they they had her sit home for the rest of her contract after this. So um Wendy, it was at Madison Square Garden. 
um, Wendy versus the spider. The spider is, was somebody else. Another woman played the spider usually, but it was a masked um, wrestler. And by all accounts, that woman was in the building that day. What they're thinking is she wouldn't agree to do the screw job or like they thought that she might. So they not might not. So who, of course, did they have fill in as the spider? They had Moolah. Moolah, who just loves screwing people over. Or at least, yeah. you know, the women she trained. Yeah, to put it mildly. Yeah. So um, the spider was not moving the way that she usually did. Um, and Moolah was known for being a hard hitter. like, And not like... Not like strong style, like I'm going to hurt you style, basically. Um, so Wendy had it on the fly completely change the match because this was not the like what she had planned out with the other person. Um, and she had to protect herself from being hurt by Mula. And she's so when Mula does cover her or the spider covers her, she kicks out at one, but the ref counts the three. In fact, she keeps going. She doesn't think that like the match is actually over and begins to kick the living shit out of Mula, which yeah. that was my favorite part. Like, you know, um, and they hadn't even told commentary what was going to happen because Gorilla Monsoon is confused on commentary. Um, he doesn't know what the hell's going on. Uh, Wendy's trying to continue the match, but uh when the announcements made that um that Mula was the new champ because she unmasks like Wendy knew at that point and she picked up the belt and started hitting Mula with it <laughs> um, and Mula fled the arena like she was taken out with police whether it was because she was afraid of Wendy or the fans or a combination who knows um and yeah, back then the fans used to get like pretty vicious like that was when you know it's still real to me damn it like people thought it was legitimately real and people yeah. got a little crazy with the with the wrestlers mm -hmm. i also um i i saw that that she thought it was weird that mula was even there because normally she wasn't backstage unless she um was like scheduled to be out in a match that night and like that kind of struck her as weird. Like looking back on it, like well, like she she should have realized like something was off or whatever. Like because Mula wouldn't be there unless she was booked. Like, yeah, and she was there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so some people have speculated that the screw job, the original screw job, was fake. That it was a story. There's there's no way because this woman still had plenty of time on her contract. And they pulled her off TV. And not only that, but they, they scrubbed her from mentions until 2010. Like, two decades later, basically. That, so, this is very real. Like, they, they meant, like, if you ever notice when they do those, like, compilations or when they talk about the women's revolution, when they do mention Wendy Richter, but that's it. Like that's i mean she gets mentioned there should be more she should have like one of those little specials which maybe she doesn't want to i could understand if she didn't want to do that she was in um uh okay. recently i think it was 2019 dark side of the ring oh not the dark side of the ring um she was in a com a, there was that too but she did a documentary about women's wrestling um she was in something like that i forget what it was called um because you know i'm real great like that <laughs> but i don't even know what the documentary was so i'm not any better <laughs> um and the thing is she's been asked about this since and she said like you know she was under contract she would have dropped the title if they asked like if they had said that night you're gonna drop the title she just would have done it she wouldn't have known that anything was going to happen. But Vince, again, decided to make an example out of her because after that, no one bothered, like no one was going to try and pull an MJF and renegotiate. Um, 
that that wasn't going to happen. So um, there was no asking for fair wages. There was no renegotiating. It was Vince's way or you're going to sit your ass at home um, and just collect your like downside guarantee. And he hasn't changed. I mean, he's, he's done that most recently I can think of. Um, Ali is one of them. Who? Uh, oh, Ali. Yeah. He did it to Brody Lee, AKA Luke Harper. Mm -hmm. Um, is Sasha, you know, slash Mercedes, Naomi, like he still follows that pattern of doing shit like that. God, I hope he's not back. I'm sorry. It just made me like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, I don't want to see that shit happen again. Like, people don't deserve that. You deserve to be compensated for the work that you do and not punished if you want to ask for more money to compensate you for the work that you're doing. Yeah. He's such a like He truly is. And I can't even imagine like, the alternative timeline where that didn't happen like wendy richter would have been the biggest name in wrestling like in women's wrestling at least um based on where where she was and like the, her pattern of work we had talked about this a little bit last night um this is two we're recording on a tuesday raw happened last night with trisha trisha's promo when she was saying um you know she's how the revolution started and all that and i in order for a revolution to work to really take root you need multiples you need multiple people at the same time who are willing to do the work all together throughout history in in women's wrestling in wwf wwe there have been one maybe two women at the same time who have wanted to work towards those goals. Wendy Richter is clearly one of those examples. Um, you know, Alundra Blaze is another example. Luna mm -hmm. Vachon, um, like, but they weren't, there weren't enough of them to, and the fans also have to like be vocal. If social media was around back then, oh, it might've been it would have been a different story because people would have been like, where the hell is Wendy Richter? Like, and they would have been able to organize and things like that. There was none of that. There were like, you know, maybe they took and there was a newsletter. Maybe Dave Meltzer was sitting there like. Doo, 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 doo. Well, I mean, like fans could have written letters, but no one would know. because It's not like it would be on some kind of public forum. Mm -hmm. Like would maybe get them laugh and burn them or not even open them you know, like it's yeah. not like on twitter or reddit or you know insta any of the social media where you're having like millions of people see this and be like yeah where are they or yeah why aren't they treating this more seriously and, and they didn't use have outlets that. picking up on it and yeah like it, they they didn't have that and like my point is like these like I understand that there were women that were trailblazers that you know did try but they weren't the revolution like all these older women come back and say like the poor horse women weren't the revolution when yeah they fucking were like it was the generation of those four and like Paige and or Saraya, you know like the that early NXT era of women were really the revolution they honestly like aj tried and lit the fire and those girls ran with it and burned they weren't in like pudding matches or bra and panty matches or evening gown matches or sexy santa suit matches or like any of that bullshit or having santino morella come in dressed as a woman and winning a women's but like battle royal they didn't deal with any like they didn't put up with that shit they wouldn't do it it never happened they have been the first group generation of women who were treated like legitimate athletes at the same level or if not higher than the men. So yes, the revolution did start with them, regardless of how many women who could wrestle came before them. Yeah, they were inspirations, but they were not the revolution. Our generation was. And that's why like promos like Trisha's, like I know that's supposed to piss you off because mm -hmm. she's a heel, but I think like they believe there's an ounce of truth to it also in their head. And 
they were inspirations, but they were not the change. Like they were not the final catalyst of change. They were building blocks, like for sure. They were building blocks. Um, because another important thing is in order for a revolution to take place and you have to have all those players in place. And I don't want to give like too much credit to a man for this, but Triple H is the one who hi- found them, hired them and let them like have these matches. Like he was not forcing anyone to do these despicable things. Like Triple H has always had a thing for like women's wrestling and strong women. Like there's a reason that the division has flourished under him. Um, And it's simply because he's backed off and let them. And he always has those like proud Papa moments. Uh, Like him and like, uh, it had to be so hard for uh, Rhea Ripley not to just completely break character um, when Triple H introduced her and they were like passing each other. Yeah. Um, I I, I don't think there's anything wrong with like, I don't think like I say I'd hate to give a man credit because unfortunately the world that we live in, a lot of times women do need a man to be a little like. To hold the door open in that yep. regard. And to treat us seriously so other men do. Like it sucks, but mm-hmm. unfortunately that's our reality until that changes one day. So like to see someone who is just like Triple H that really believed in the women and just let them go do their thing, like that that really was the major thing to change it all. Like we we needed someone in power to be able to be like, no more bullshit, go out and be a legit athlete. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Triple H like has had gone on record before, you know, everything happened saying that he thought that China could and should be the WWF at the time champion. He's like I see no reason for her not to. Yeah. Um so it's it's not surprising that, you know, once he was heading up once he started NXT that he looked for and hired women who could wrestle. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really a changing in general time. Like women in sports are being taken more seriously now, still not at the level that they should. But, you know, we're we've come a long way, but not as far as we should. Miles better than when we were kids, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Across across the board. Which um, gives me hope for the future for the little girls of right now. That by the time they're our age, it it'll be pretty much equal. Yeah, I always one of the things that like chokes me up all the time when I'm watching like some of these epic um matches with with the women, all of the all the little girls and all the little boys too who get to see like these women kicking ass, being strong and smart and like really tearing down the walls for what you know, they might be getting told that their gender roles are supposed to be or like, you know, expanding their minds. And like, there's so much representation um, within the women's division now, um, not just in WWE, but AEW and Impact. It's a beautiful thing. I'm like somewhat jealous of these kids Mm because I didn't have that. Like I had, you know, Trish and a thong barking like a dog not Becky and Charlotte and Rhonda main eventing like that WrestleMania main event me like I actually cried because it just Mm -hmm. I thought back to the wrestling I had to watch as a kid and what I had to watch the women do and how uncomfortable it was and just sad and degrading and then seeing how far it came and like thinking of kid like little like girls that were watching it then and seeing them main eventing the biggest show of the year and i remember like the end like the entrances and like i was crying yeah it was a huge moment and i'm so excited for like this next generation is just gonna think those things are normal yeah. and i think like yes that is what i i want that is what i hope to see yeah it i mean it still blows me away sometimes because like i said we grew up on a completely different product and it's just beautiful to see 
everyone is just a superstar in that company or just a wrestler in other companies. They're not, they're not divas or, you know, like mm -hmm. there's, they're not piss break matches anymore. Piss break matches sometimes are like a lot of the times are the men. There's like, oh, I don't give a shit about theory. I'm going to the bathroom. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> how'd I know you were going to say Austin theory? Right. How I mean, do I know? People there's people on AEW too like what's his face um oh god I'm so tired I can't think the one that took over like the nightmare factory but now it's just the factory that oh QT Marshall yes there's a piss break match like, yeah yeah all righty so uh we got a little well not off topic but away from Wendy Richter um so we are gonna wrap this up by simply saying Wendy was a tremendous talent who deserves to be recognized for her contributions and her efforts uh, inside the ring and also outside the ring and for getting majorly screwed over. Um, she's definitely one of the, like, as I read more and more about her, like, my respect just, like, grew and grew and grew. And then so did my anger, not towards her, <laughs> towards the McMahon. I, I didn't think I had any more room to be mad at him, but I did. Oh, I'm sure we'll find more reasons as more things come out throughout the years. I'm sure we're not done with the surprises. Oh, I'm sure as we keep going through this series, we will find more and more things or remember more and more things. Yeah. Ugh. That. A... Oh, go ahead. I just say what an awful trash bag of a human being. Yeah. Why are... It's just not fair. It's not fair that all the worst people like have it the easiest in life with the most money. It's not right. It's just eat the rich. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I I agree with that. Leave Tony Khan alone for right now. Like he hasn't he hasn't proven that he is a bad dude. He seems like a good dude. And like I've mentioned many times before, anyone that is that rich and still worked in the service industry has a lot of respect for me. Yeah. Just people suck to deal with like so yeah good on him yes um and if you we've had some people now uh leave some comments on women that they would like us to cover with our series so if you have anyone please leave a comment um if you're listening to us on spotify you can head over to our instagram which is feminism underscore meets underscore pro wrestling um you if this is on youtube that you're seeing it leave a comment down below you, you can find us on social media we are there yeah we're uh, a lot of places i mean you won't find me personally on tiktok um but I'm, I'm on there against my will but well not against your will <laughs> um but yes you can find us on tiktok at floundering adult uh floundering underscore adult um and by us, I mean me with uh, <laughs> pulling Megan in. With clips that I wasn't aware was on TikTok until she, she dropped the bomb on me that, yeah, you are on TikTok. And it's like, oh, how about that? Yeah. Hey, maybe one day we'll trend on TikTok. You never know. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Megan, do you see? I don't even know what that means. But like... you, you don't know what trending on TikTok means? What, like do you get a lot of like likes or shares or how it like how's it work on there yeah like a lot a lot a lot of likes and views shares on oh. there's like so for every social media platform there's different benchmarks to meet when for you to be considered viral um so it can be x amount of shares x amount of um or x amount of views it doesn't usually go by likes yeah i was wondering how it worked on there because like youtube obviously it's like how many people have viewed it mm -hmm. and you know like twitter like how many people like retweet it and liked it like likes kind of helps too with twitter facebook obviously it's like <clears throat> how many shares how many people shared it instagram well we saw that and how that happened like personally with that one video like yeah. likes and views holy moly but i didn't know if there was like a share option on tiktok or just a like or a view so i'm not sure how like things trend on there i've shared videos yeah. from tiktok to you you can right. also like, like, post them on the app that's what i meant like you know like facebook you can like share something back to facebook and that mm -hmm. that's how it goes viral like i didn't know if 
there's like a news feed thing, I guess is what I'm looking for, where like you would share something to that on TikTok. Yeah. So there's two different things. There's a for you page and then there is like your friends page um, or like who you're following. So um, and on if someone that you're following hits reshare, it's more likely to come up on your FYP um, for you page. And if it, um, you're also more likely to see it on your, like, it just come up on your friends, like, because they recommended it basically. Yeah. Grandma's showing her age here. It's not even the age thing. There's a lot of people my age that are on it. It's the, it's the point now is like, I'm stubborn about it. So many people have been on me about getting TikTok that like, now I'm just refusing out of principle. <laughs> I know how you would get TikTok see whatever is there when it ultimately gets shared to a Facebook reel or an Instagram reel. <laughs> if Kenny Omega started an account that was solely, solely thirst traps, <laughs> you would sign up tomorrow. They'd find their way on other social media. I'm sure. Would you want to wait? I'm that stubborn. <laughs> you underestimate my stubbornness. Just letting you know, if Kenny Omega starts a TikTok of just pure thirst traps, I will tell you about it, but I'm not sharing one to you unless it's your birthday. Speaking of that, that son of a bitch knew exactly what he did last Wednesday <laughs> because he flat out said, like, Jeans Omega entered the chat and shared. He knew exactly what he was doing. That internet exploded after he came out. Like, did you see all the posts? It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I like those are the comment sections I love reading because I wait for the people who are doing the same thing I am, which is like seeing how ridiculous people will be. I was just like, ah, this did not disappoint. Literally make yourself some popcorn. Just be like, ooh. Oh, no matter how like attractive I am to a celebrity, I'm never ever in my life going to be as desperately thirsty in their comments as some of those people are. Like, yeah, did my mouth literally drop open when he came out? Absolutely. But I'm not going to go like commenting shit on this actual human being's Instagram not gonna happen like will I message you and say holy shit yeah <laughs> um I still love that with BTE you had <laughs> like I, you had to tell me like that his legs were exposed because I didn't notice <laughs> I mean he he looked like he was basically wearing nothing so I definitely noticed <laughs> Like I said, we try to be respectful here, but sometimes people know what they're doing and they need to stop. <laughs> I can't believe, like, I, I was literally so caught up in the emotion of the story they were telling. He could have been buck-ass naked and I would not have noticed. You know, I'm, I'm a simple girl. <laughs> I, I have eyes, Sabrina. I can't help it. Even though my husband says that he's a funny looking bastard, but I think it's just because he's jealous. Yeah, I disagree with Brian on that one, but most humans do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> most humans who are attracted to men. I, I mean, most humans that have eyes can appreciate that that man is beautiful. Like, I don't get my husband. I think it's just jealousy. Well, yes. <laughs> Probably. I love him, though. <laughs> Which one are you talking about, Megan? Brian, this time. <laughs> All righty. So, <laughs> on not... that note. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I am, like, overly tired and allergies and Benadryl and Goofy. So, yay, end of podcast madness. Yes. So, um, yes, leave your comments on anyone you would like us to cover. Um, some of the suggestions we've received were Victoria, Molina, Jazz. Um, I'm not going to be able to say Bull's last name. Nakano, is that? Bull Nakano. Yeah, anyway. Um, and Rock and Robin. I promise if we cover someone, I will know how to say their name. And maybe shout out who suggested it too. Um, just give them a little shout out to whoever. I would love to. 
I don't recall. They commented it on our, do you know? No, or they commented on YouTube. Oh, I haven't looked at YouTube in a while. I kind of gave up on checking it. I just pretty much like check our Instagram and that's about it. Gotcha. Well, um, thank you, listener. We'll go back and look. <laughs> yes. It was a, a long name. I think it began with a D. Gotcha. <laughs> Not gonna make a D's nuts joke. Not gonna make a D's nuts joke. All right. So yes. Uh <laughs> next week we will be back. I think I think we're just going to be back at a regular week. I don't think we have our special guest next week. Um they've been very busy as of late with lots of wrestling shows. So um, but in the next couple of weeks he will be on. I will definitely need a lot of forewarning for that. So I'm not as unprepared, please. <laughs> <laughs> you were very prepared for this, Megan. Yeah, always. I'm prepared to my middle name. Mm-hmm. And as always, in the words of our Lord and Savior, John Cena. Hustle, <laughs> loyalty, and respect. Yabadoo. <laughs>